Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Donovan is off doing something. Today is a very exciting day. We are uh, moving right along. It is insulation day. So we are having uh, spray foam done inside here and we'll, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. So the guys already gotten started. They got the windows masked off in the back and we'll go check it out in a second. We're gonna talk to our spray foam contractor, Scott, in a little bit. He's gonna run us through all of the details on spray foam and all that stuff and we'll take a look at the process of doing all the uh, the spray foam inside of uh, the new additions and all that stuff. So Scott, thank you so much for stopping by and kind of talking to us a little bit about spray foam and insulation in, in general. So really appreciate that. Um, how long have you been doing insulation? First week of June was my 23rd beginning of the 23rd year that I've been in insulation, uh, doing home improvements. Uh, everything from buildings to two million gallon water tanks or chemical tanks in South Dakota. Katrina hit, I did over 5,000 foundations and homes, the underside of the floors down in Louisiana. Uh, roofing with foam, uh, that's what I originally started in was okay. spray foam commercial, low slope, flat roofing. Nowadays, uh, I do a lot of the TPO uh, with, with that. Is spray foam like the only product you guys install or do you know we, we still do uh in fact i'm working on a, a small apartment building right now where we'll be doing fiberglass in all the walls we just did two uh brand new build townhomes uh fourplexes that are fiberglass uh we're spraying foam on usually the rim joists which is code in the state of minnesota to to uh, spray rim joists okay uh, almost every structure more than one floor has a rim joist whether it's in the basement first or second floor when you get into multi-housing and that, the cost of foam is a bit high uh, compared to fiberglass. When our codes right now, which they have been changing nationwide, are still based on R value, R21 bat in a wall or R21 spray foam in a wall is still R21. Uh, so uh, we do the cellulose in the attics, fiberglass in walls, and spray foam anywhere else that's needed. Uh, and yes, in some projects, we'll do 100% spray foam. Can you explain what our value kind of is? Just like an overview of like what the heck that number our is? Our value is the resistance to airflow passage is to simplify it as much as possible. When you look at a typical wall, uh, you have windows and you have stud space. Mm -hmm. Your windows carry, which is relatively new in about 20 years, a value of U value. Uh, but when you look at the average window, it has a better insulation value than an R21 uh, fiberglass wall. Oh, really? Because it's an air barrier. There's no air flowing. So another way to look at this is a sweater versus a windbreaker on a cold morning out on the golf course. Uh, your sweater has multiple, it has a good R value. It has maybe an R5 to R7 R value to it. That windbreaker has no R value to it at all, but it stops the airflow from hitting your body. And that's the key to insulation. That is what has been learned. And that's one of the greatest accomplishments of spray foam. It's an air barrier built into its insulation system. Compare that to like a bad insulation, the, the pink stuff that everybody is familiar with. Is that gonna feel different maybe? You're, what we've seen over- less of it? Yeah, through all the years of spray foam, the, the couple things that you notice, the big benefits of spray foam. Number one, it adds that structural integrity, structural strength to your structure. So in the sense of where we are in Minneapolis uh, and the suburbs, we do get some severe storms that come through and it's you're wrapped up in a blanket when you're all spray foam the walls the roof line or the ceiling is spray foam it encapsulates the structure now when you put heat in uh, i.e let me kind of display explain that with a cup i just got a cup of coffee this morning and this is in a styrofoam cup that is insulated against me burning my fingers and keeping the coffee warm. This plastic lid has virtually no R value to it at all. But you'll have about 
12 to 15 minutes of your coffee staying hot or warm in this cup. Put the lid on, you've added no R value at all to this product or this setup, but you now have kept the warm air in and the cold air out. So at this point, whether it's a cold ice cup or a hot coffee cup, whatever the product is or your temperature, your atmosphere is going to be conditioned properly and correctly because you don't have air loss. And that's the key to all insulation is your air loss, the heat or the cold transfer. Compared to your old style bad insulation, you have a vapor barrier. On the average wall that's done in the United States, fiberglass bat is installed in your cavity. Now, even though it's critical to what's called a friction fit, this insulation is set in, it's cut to size and pushed in, but you will always have, if I had an infrared camera, you would see that there's heat loss or air loss along the sides. So then they turn around and in Minnesota and most states, they put uh, four mil poly over this is called your vapor barrier and your air barrier. The problem with this is that it's attached with staples, as you can see right here. Well, when you put holes in your vapor barrier and your air barrier, and you put 5,000 staples in a smaller house, you're protruding through your air barrier. Now, take it a step further. When they put sheetrock on, they've got sheetrock screws that are supposed to hit the studs. No installer is gonna hit the stud on every single screw. So now you end up with a screw going through in your cavity field of insulation. And so now in Minnesota, they do call this a vapor and air retarder and have switched names from a barrier. Closed cell spray foam, which we're about to do in this job, is an air barrier. You can drive a screw right into the middle of that cavity, right into that foam. You have not damaged your barrier at all, unless you screw it all the way through to the exterior and out the side of the house. Those are benefits that are really strong with spray foam. Plus it is adhered through the application to your stud sidewalls. So it's a 100% adhered product versus a friction fit and a staple and caulk in place vapor and air barrier. On this particular job with doing closed cell spray foam, you can imagine that if I, I could put my mouth up to this and actually blow through it, I could blow air through it. And this is your fiberglass, whether it's cellulose or fiberglass. When you take closed cell spray foam, you have a closed cell structure that is there. There's no air per, that's going to flow through this product. So then you get more of a conductivity transfer of temperature or a thermal transfer of temperature. And those are controlled again by foam. There is studies that show that fiberglass at 15 degrees and less has up to a 17% shrinkage rate to this product inside a cavity. So here in Minnesota, when we hit 10 below, your R21 wall, because of insulation procedure and the shrinkage of the fiberglass, now is equivalent to at best an R13 in your wall. Spray foam expands and contracts with the structure of your house and it stays and holds its true aged R value. Now, when people say, why should I go with foam versus fiberglass when we're still dealing with code of R value? That has been changing and will continue to change with the, Fed, with the government and where they change. We have been uh, advocating for years to use a different measuring tool for insulation value. In my personal opinion, two inches of closed cell foam in all walls and three or four at most in roof lines and ceilings would be far superior to any amount of insulation you can get with fiberglass or cellulose in a structure. So Scott, we have a lot of viewers who aren't really quite familiar with our climate here. So how does insulating here in, I guess, more of a colder climate vary from somewhere like in a 
be a hotter climate or something a little more temperate and stable, I guess. How, mm -hmm. how important Up is it? Up to is? approximately just north of Minneapolis, about 45 minutes to an hour. We are in zone five of the United States. The United States is set up into zones one through six, all the way up into Canada. Higher number, the more extreme temperatures that we have. Uh, I, yesterday we had 102 air temperature. I think humidity was in the high 80s. Yep. So heat index was approximately 114 to 122. Now, heat index is a new measurement that they use because we've been using wind chill mm -hmm. for our winter time. So it's 20 degrees, but the wind's blowing in the winter. It may be zero or five degrees, true wind chill temperature. We have some pretty good extreme swings here. Exactly. <laughs> so that's where in the north part of the country it is important. And that's why closed cell foam, which again is an air barrier. There's also an open cell foam that's on the market. Now in this area, I use open cell for sound dampening. Okay. It's an excellent product along with mineral wool and fiberglass is a good sound absorption. Uh, where closed cell is blocking and you get sound vibration sure. through it. So it is not the best sound proofing or sound dampening product. Uh, then you go into your open cells. Uh, there are a few guys that are still trying to sell open cell in this market for an insulation value in the wall. The problem is it does not carry a vapor barrier rating. So you either it's have to same poly, you either have to poly it uh -huh. or they, they have allowed a few of these vapor coatings, spray applied paint that has a vapor rate or a primer. Uh, but that is tough to get. Uh, cities to approve that. There's only a couple that do right now. Could you do both, like a, a layer of closed cell and open cell? Is that something that people do or makes sense? Or does it even make sense? I think that long term is the way to go for insulation. It, 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 it's going to help bring the cost in line. You either change the term of our value and let us start doing a like one inch air seal with closed cell foam and then go with an open cell or a fiberglass bat. It's called flash and bat. They want the vapor barrier to be on the warm side of the assembly, assembly being the wall. Okay. So you can't turn around and do a flash and bat and, and get the city to sign off unless then you still have a vapor barrier poly or a spray applied product over it. And now it's not cost efficient. So hopefully, in my lifetime, in the next five to 10 years before I finally retire, we've made the changes to minimize the amount of closed cell foam because it is an expensive part of the job. And, and, and do more of an assembly of insulation systems and build a wall structure at that point. Lastly, we talk a little bit about uh, cost and how it how the different products kind of compare? In general, spray foam in a wall cavity is running right now at approximately $1.75 a board foot. A board foot is one inch thick by one square foot. So in a cavity, we do three inches, which is five and a quarter square foot. Mm -hmm. Complete, job complete. And that's pretty much the going rate nationwide. There's some people that are out there a little lower and some out there a little higher. Fiberglass installed with poly and all the different caulking and acoustical caulking that you need to do to get reach code is running approximately two and a quarter a square foot. Uh, when you take open cell, you're going to run right around 275 a square foot. You know, one thing we haven't really talked about is with an advantage of the spray foam is the fact that it actually finds all the little nooks and crannies and it seals them. We talked a little bit about the air sealing, but also like physically seals this property out here is got some acreage to it mm -hmm. we're not in the city you have the mice you have the gophers the squirrels the yes. the gardener snakes all the different things because you're out in the country a bit yep. spray foam is not sold as a pest product but it is it oil it is made from oil it is part of the plastics family the plastic council uh, it is a hard density product, so you're not going to be able to burrow through that. So I do a lot of farming, a lot of pole barns mm -hmm. with closed cell spray foam. When you put fiberglass in, that gives 
rodents a nesting place. I have taken apart a lot of walls with many mice things in the fiberglass. You're like, this is this destroyed and there's nests. In 23 years, and I have done well in excess of a thousand farm pro projects in the five state region here alone, I have never ever got a call back that rodents have, have infiltrated the spray foam. We do have a gardener snake up here in Minnesota. It's not a deadly, it's a nuisance snake. You see it every now and then. It yeah. scares everybody. Many times how it's getting into our structures in the city is it's coming up through the hollow core block oh. and coming up into the rim joist area and coming into the house. That is how the mice get in, that's how the snakes get in. When we spray foam, the one unique thing is foam is applied as a 100% liquid. It's a part A and a part B that mixes together immediately upon exiting the gun. And within three to five seconds, it has a chemical reaction and at eight to 12 seconds is now spray foam. Job done, pretty much. It will find least resistance gaps and voids and fill those upon spraying. So that's where you get the air barrier, which is also uh, an open gap barrier yeah. where your rodents or your pests are going to try and infiltrate through. Um, how I've always told people through the years is you have fiberglass at the bottom of the pile for quality and longevity uh, and what it performs. Then cellulose, then mineral wool, then open cell, and then the granddaddy is closed cell. Those are your ratings on what the products do in our climate and pretty much 75% of the country. Thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through the intricacies of insulation. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how our project ends up. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and your investment that you put in up front is gonna pay for it forever and ever and ever. There is no loss of that R value. It can't get dirty like fiberglass and lose its R value. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Cause every, I've only lived in fiberglass houses. You can always, like in the winter, you can literally feel the, like there's air leakage, you can feel it. Like I can, I'm sitting on the couch, I can feel the cold breeze coming by me. And if you can feel a cold breeze, that's your pocketbook. Yeah. Well, yeah. Basically saying here, I'm gonna open up a window. The average house has enough leaks to, to consider a window open three inches. Really? That's the average house that's built is got a window open three inches year round. So again, we want to do something about energy loss. We, there are products, as you were showing me some of the quality of windows that you put in, uh, that are going to be high energy. Yes, the investment is up front. It's what's called return on your investment. And even more so overall comfort in the end, better product, better outcome. Better, better, every, it really is better everything. It's, it's, it's people with allergies and problems like that. Put in your hard floor surfaces, uh, not carpet, and put in your spray foam and you're gonna have a clean, healthy house. Thank you, appreciate I, it. I appreciate it myself and I look forward to uh, talking to you in another couple of years and getting that phone call of, <laughs> God, it is kind of comfortable need, in more. here. Come open up all the walls. Yes, <laughs> we're, we're gonna continue it through the existing. <laughs> So there we go, we're all insulated in here and the, the foam actually worked out really nicely. One of the things that I really like about this, the, the spray in, is the fact that it finds all the, the holes and voids and things. And so, even some that you don't. And even the things you didn't know were there. We had, we had a couple wires that like poked through. Then, it, yeah, it, like it, it blew up because <laughs> it blew up on the other yeah, side. So, that's the other thing. Just make sure you know where all your holes are on the outside because you're gonna have some kind of mushrooming effect. Uh, to seal them up but it's nice to know those are completely sealed no critters are going to get in the holes anything like that even where our building uh, matched up with the old house here down here on the uh, the rim yeah, that's, that's all that's sealed cool. now too so that gap is gone it's uh it's, it's good it's it's nice to have again more forward progress. forward progress movement thing once again so the only other little detail with insulation on this uh project is going to be in the ceiling so oh i don't know how many episodes ago when we had mike here he was talking about uh insulating the infloor radiant tubes yep. to send that heat you know up it's just a foil like a bubble wrap but it's got foil on both sides yeah so they're... so it's just like a foil foil bubble wrap literally what you just what you just said and then that that what that does it reflects the heat 
for the uh, master bedroom above here. So the heat goes to the bedroom and that just radiates you know, down or, or whatever. So we right, have that. That's on a different zone. Yep. So we want to control that differently than here. So it that's helps true too, yeah. manage the temperature differences. And this this was missing here when we removed the ceiling. And it was cold. It was always cold in the. Yeah. So the so the, this actually does something because it wasn't very effective before, uh, and now this is this is going to help quite a bit. So we have this to go in basically everywhere that hasn't had the in-floor heat or had some insulation in it before. Yep. So we'll also have this, we'll do the same thing down here on that floor to push that heat up into this area. And we did what we could and we kind of stuffed as much as we could in the kind of the underneath here in the mechanical yeah. room. A, a lot of this had some stuff already and it was, you know, we had the floors up. So you, you all saw that we had to like- and it's full of wires and it's just yeah, kind of- You can only do so much. Yeah. at that point but at least now we have the in-floor heats all kind of done and wrapped up this is all going to be ready for sheetrock next but we're not going to work in here because it's finally nice out so we're going to go outside yeah. and we're going to actually i think pretty much finish or at least try to get the exterior pretty much completely wrapped up before coming back in here yep. and getting all of the yeah, we've got a little bit of siding and just kind of, yeah, a, lot of, of that. a lot of trim i don't know if you know this there's a lot of trim on this job <laughs> Just, really? just, a, just a little bit of trim, not too much. <laughs> so that is, that's it for uh, for insulation. We are moving forward and feeling good, and that feels pretty good. That's it. So yeah, so yeah. that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. We greatly appreciate. If you have any questions or comments on insulation, you can ask Scott because I don't know anything about that stuff. He, he's good. He knows his stuff. <laughs> yeah, he knows what's going on. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. If you have any questions and all that? Thank you for watching. Happy woodworking. We'll see you next time. And uh, goodbye. Run away, run away. Into, into the light, walk towards the light. Oh, I must be in the light. <laughs>